The Rover 600, an exclusive range of four-door saloons offering style, prestige, outstanding quality and powerful yet refined performance. The comprehensive model lineup will initially comprise of three exciting two-litre derivatives, the 620 SI, SLI and GSI. They'll soon be supplemented by the 620i and the joint flagships of the range, the 623 IS and the 623 GSI. In this video, we'll take a look at the Rover 600's powertrain, suspension, steering and braking systems, supplementary restraint system, as well as some of its electrical systems and body features. We'll start by taking a quick look around the engine compartment. On right-hand drive cars, the brake master cylinder and fluid reservoir will be at the rear right-hand side. Adjacent to that, on vehicles fitted with a manual gearbox, will be the clutch fluid reservoir. Also adjacent to the brake master cylinder is the main fuse relay box. If ABS is fitted, you'll find another fuse box in front of the suspension turret. This one houses several ABS fuses, as well as the ABS motor relay. In front of the battery, you'll find the coolant expansion tank. Then moving over to the left-hand side, you'll find the washer fluid reservoir. If it's fitted, the air conditioning receiver dryer, the power steering fluid reservoir, and behind that, on top of the inner wing, the vehicle identification plate. And to the rear, again, only if it's fitted, is the ABS modulator assembly. The engine compartment of left-hand drive cars is very similar, although, for obvious reasons, the brake and clutch cylinders swap sides with the ABS modulator. Moving on to the power unit, the dipstick can be found at the front of the engine which faces the left-hand side of the car. The engine number is stamped clearly on the forward face of the block, while the transmission number on both manual and automatics can be found on a sticker on the forward face of the transmission casing. All three engines used are completely new to Rover, although you'll immediately notice they all bear more than a passing resemblance to the 1.6 engines seen on the Rover 216 and 416 models. The 2.0-litre, 16-valve, single overhead cam unit fitted to the 620i produces 115 PS at 5,300 RPM. The unit fitted to the 620SI, SLI and GSI models is a high compression version of the same engine. Different cam profiles, together with different pistons, which create a higher compression, result in an increased power output of 131 PS at 5,400 RPM. The third and final engine used in the 623 models is the 2.3-litre double overhead cam unit. This unit puts out an impressive 158 PS at 5,800 RPM. All three engines use cylinder blocks produced using the new die casting or NDC method. That's where molten aluminium is injected into the mould at a much lower pressure than during a conventional casting process. This allows better control of the cooling and solidification processes and in turn produces very high quality castings. Moving on. All three engines use a multi-layer metal cylinder head gasket they all have four valves per cylinder. None are safe engines if the valve timing is incorrectly set. All rotate in an anti-clockwise direction. All have adjustable valve clearances adjusted in the same way as those on the 1.6 engine. All use the refined and well-proven PGM FI engine management system. And finally, they all feature two belt-driven balance shafts. These have been introduced to improve vehicle refinement and comfort. They're driven in opposite directions at twice the speed of the crankshaft. 
Their job is to help the crankshaft suppress the engine vibration generated by the pistons as they move up and down the cylinder bores. The timing belt and balancer shaft drive belt tensions are controlled individually by separate spring-loaded semi-automatic tensioners. These share a common location and are both locked in position by a single nut. To allow individual belt tensioning, the timing belt tensioner pulley can be locked in position using a 6mm bolt. Both belts should be replaced at 60,000 miles or 5 years and neither belt requires any other routine maintenance. Now we'll look at a couple of features unique to the 2.3 litre engine. Firstly, the cylinder block is of the closed deck design. This means the deck, the machine face on the top of the block, has a large overall surface area. When compared to the open deck designed 2 litre block, you can see quite clearly much less of its surface area is given up for use as coolant passage. As a result, the 2.3 litre cylinder block possesses even greater rigidity. Another feature unique to the 2.3 litre block is the fibre reinforced material or FRM cylinder liners. These are constructed using a mixture of carbon and aluminium oxide fibres which are formed into a cylindrical shape. Liquid aluminium penetrates the compressed fibres during the casting process, creating cylinder liners which offer, when compared to cast iron liners, less friction, provide a higher resistance to wear, expand less when hot, dissipate heat better, and allow engine designers the luxury of being able to position the cylinder bores closer to each other. A word of warning though. The FRM liners are very sensitive to abrasion and are easily damaged, so be very careful when working in and around the bore area. Now, all Rover 600 models feature a hydraulically damped engine mounting. Each mounting operates like a simple shock absorber and consists of two oil-filled chambers connected by a small passage. Engine vibration is absorbed through the mounting by the oil as it passes from one chamber to the other. And because more engine movement is often noticeable on vehicles fitted with an automatic transmission, these vehicles use an electronically controlled hydraulic engine mounting. Again, the mounting consists of two oil-filled chambers connected by a passage. But in this version, the size of the passage can be changed. When idling, a large passage is provided, which allows the oil to travel easily between the two chambers. This softens the mounting and improves its damping efficiency. As soon as the engine speed increases, the size of the passage is reduced by a movement of a rotary valve within the mounting. This makes it more difficult for the oil to travel from one chamber to the other, stiffening up the mounting, which will now perform like a normal hydraulic mount. All Rover 600s use the well-proven PGM-FI engine management system, which accurately controls both injector timing and ignition timing through a single electronic control module mounted below the carpet in the passenger footwell. With the exception of a couple of changes to the self-diagnosis feature and a few additional features on the twin overhead cam engine, it's almost identical to the PGM-FI systems you'll have seen before. Although you should note, all Rover 600 models are fitted with an inertia switch mounted behind the front ashtray, which will cut off the fuel supply in the event of a sudden impact.